So the first step is to cut a hole in the bottom of your laptop. Hello, so today we are going to be gently water cooling my gaming laptop because I saw the video that Linus and Dave2D did about the gaming laptop that has like an external desktop water cooler and I thought that was super cool and they got like about a 10% performance bump using that water cooler. So I want to try it myself and uh, this is going to be real jank, but we'll see how it goes. Also, if there's background noise, uh, I now have a puppy and uh, yeah, he makes lots of whining noises, so there might be stuff in the background. Let's get started. So I've got my laptop. Um, I have cut a massive hole in the bottom of it, um, as one does. This is about $400 on Craigslist. It doesn't really make sense to water cool something that doesn't have super high like top tier performance because it's not as thermally constrained, but I don't want to sacrifice hardware that costs like one or two grand. So I'd rather sacrifice something like this in case it goes wrong. Um, I've got a very cheap aluminum radiator. And if this works and I want to do this better in the future, um, I have you know a better copper radiator that I could potentially swap out. But for right now, we're doing all cheap aluminum parts. Um, for my uh, tubing, I've got uh, a fish tank cleaning kit. Got my distilled water, got my little pump, which is for a fountain but should work for testing. And then I've got all of these little um, quick disconnects, but um, obviously given that this is not a specific dimension tube, it's just a fish tank cleaner. I don't know if uh, these quick disconnects are going to work or not, but we will find out. So first step is to cut a hole in the laptop. I've already done that. So I'm pretty sure that in order to get a good thermal connection between my water block and the, the heat pipes, um, I'm gonna need to get rid of that paint. And I will be putting the water block on this uh, right side. All right, hopefully that's masked off enough so that metal shards don't end up in the computer. Time to Dremel. Ta-da, now we've got some exposed copper that hopefully we can pull some heat off of. All right, with that done, I can start working on the loop part. I'm gonna get the loop all set up without my laptop so that if anything drips or leaks, I can test that before it's attached to the laptop. So um, I'll start with the radiator. I've got this little plastic housing that I'm gonna put things in. It's like the worst 3D print ever, but whatever. So I originally designed this to have the tubes of the radiator facing the uh, fan side, but unfortunately the tubes kink when um, pressed against the inside of the housing. So I need to have more room for the tubes, so I need to flip the radiator over on this side, which means my back plate that I plan to screw on um, won't have enough room. So I just quick punched some holes in the back plate design and restarted the print. I think now it's time to get the wiring. So these are both 12 volts. Um, I've got a 12 volt uh, wall wart here. And uh, I'm just gonna connect them up. Alrighty, AC adapter. Let's see if the fan works. It's not quiet. It's not any louder than my laptop under full load either, but if this actually is a good idea, I'm gonna need to probably swap this out for a quieter fan and or add speed control. So now I've got my external water cooler, 3D printed a new back plate that lets the hoses just kind of like hang out. I actually think it looks kind of cool. Um, the print is crap though. I've got my water block, I've got these quick fittings. Um, it attaches like so, but when I disconnect it, water is going to drip out. Now this happens on the production version, but only on the laptop side. The cooler side doesn't seem to leak. And I don't know if they have a special quick connect that actually like seals the, the hoses when you disconnect it, but I don't have that. So I do have the pump mounted below the radiator. 
but I do not have a reservoir. So without a reservoir, um, it's going to be hard to get rid of all the bubbles. This does seem to be working to flush the bubbles out. Disconnect that, reconnect, ah, ah. All right. I think the loop's full now. <laughs> See if it works. Wow, the pump is not quiet. Don't buy this pump. Very loud, I was concerned about the fan speed, but now I can't even hear the fan because of this pump. Um, wow though, it is pretty cool. You get, uh, get a cooled block. I 3D print some parts to hold the water block on as well as some little like legs to uh, um, lift the laptop up so there's enough clearance. The back plate is flexy and that flex actually helps compress the water block onto the thermal paste. I have no idea if this is sufficient thermal coupling, but we're gonna test it at the end and see if it works. All right, man, this is so cool. I saw the YouTube video just a couple days ago and just two days later, I've got my own external water cooling unit just like that. So time to see if it actually works. All right, so I'm driving around in Cyberpunk. I'm getting like, I don't know, about 50 FPS. Um, 45 to 50, um, depending on the terrain. And I am now at um, 69 degrees on the GPU and 84 on, oh, I just pulled out of the game, but I don't know, around 80 on the, uh, on the core zero. So I'm going to plug in the water cooler. There we go. Still not quiet, but I'm gonna drive around. All right, it's been like five minutes. Looks like uh, driving around, I'm still close to 50s, but maybe more like 52, 53. I am getting hot air blowing out of the radiator, which means the water is pulling at least some heat from the computer. So let's see what the temperatures are at. All right, we've got 60 on the GPU and 76 on the Core Zero. For the next test, I have Furmark running. It's gotten up to GPU temp of 72 degrees. I don't have the pump on. And I'm going to plug the pump in. Changes. Okay, so after turning on the fan, you can see the temperature does go down. Uh, it's down to 62 now, but the loop is probably not hot yet. So I've got to run it for like five more minutes, maybe even 10 more minutes to see um, if the temperature goes back up to 72 after the uh, water gets saturated with heat, or if it stays, you know, down in the 60s where it is right now. All right, it's been a little bit, and I expected it actually to come back up as the water got hot, but it's now down at 59 degrees. So it's looking pretty stable so far. So I'm pretty happy with this thing. It does pull heat out of the system. You can feel it. Does that actually help performance all that much? Eh. Here are the Cinebench scores. There's a tiny bump. Um, it does seem like the frame rate is more consistent in games, not like massively better, but the uh, minimum frame drop seems to be um, less bad now that there's um, water cooling. But eh, 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 don't don't do this expecting to turn your computer into don't do this at all. Actually, don't don't do this at all. I wasn't expecting a 10% performance bump like the production one has, and I didn't get it. Um, so. If you like this video, like it, and I am going to try more things in the future.